Hello and welcome. My name is Andrew and this is the Who Dat Discussion powered by Overtime Media. This is going to be another off-season edition of the Who Dat Discussion, but there's still a lot to talk about. There's some news with David Onyemata's suspension coming out for possession of marijuana. And then also we're going to get into some camp battles as training camp is coming up on us as it's going to be coming up very soon in only like two, three weeks. So that's going to be really interesting stuff. So we're going to start prepping and preparing for this 2019 season and starting with some, you know, analyzing some of the offseason by the Saints and seeing what possible camp battles are going to be. We're going to basically preview camp in the next few episodes and because that's coming up upon us and we can't wait to preview camp, preview the preseason, and preview the regular season in this 2019 Saints season. It should be extremely exciting and I just can't wait to get right into this. But first, I just want to say, guys, I am sorry for this episode being a little late. There were some scheduling conflicts as we are working on having a joint episode with the All Saints Consider podcast, really great podcast. If you haven't checked them out already, please check them out. They're also under the Overtime Media, and if you like Overtime Podcasts, this is an amazing podcast. And even if you haven't um, listened to other Overtime Podcasts, this is an amazing one. Obviously, it was on here before us, so you probably have listened to it. If you're listening, you know, it's a Saints podcast, you're probably listening to that one already, but they do an amazing work, and we just trying to schedule to get something together, so that's why we were a little late this week, probably next week, we'll uh, have a joint episode with them, and that's really all I gotta say for, like, the housekeeping stuff, and also, it is 4th of July when I'm recording this, so happy 4th, and obviously, football is an American staple, so there couldn't be a better way of spending my 4th of July than talking some Saints football. So we are going to start off with some Saints news as David Onyemata did get his suspension for his possession of marijuana and it was only one game which is good. I think that's really good. It wasn't four games, it wasn't three games. I think the main headline is going to be that he avoided a big suspension and I think that's really big for the Saints. He came in here, he's had, he had four and a half sacks last year and only starting six games, I believe. So that's, again, he's four and a half sacks. He also, he's going to be the one that's going to substitute in for Sheldon Rankins when Rankins is out. So only the suspension being one game, and that, that game is a home game, opening up the season in the Dome. I'm hoping that that's just an easy game for the Saints. And not an easy game for the Saints, but an easy way to start the season off. And like, not low stress, because that's a really good team. The Texans were a playoff team, but a game that sh- they should win. I don't think they need Onyemata to win the game. I think Onyemata, he was also named by Pro Football Focus as a rising star and a player to watch out for next season, which I think is really interesting because he, I mean, look, four and a half sacks last year, which is really big, 35 tackles. And, you know, he only played a certain amount of snaps, kind of was part-time player and still had four and a half sacks. That's really good, and that's what you want to see. Um, He also completed the diversion program and won't be prosecuted for his marijuana possession, which is obviously good. He doesn't really have to think about this anymore after that one-game suspension. I think he's going to be fine, but it is going to be a camp battle to watch out for, which we'll get into later, is that defensive tackle position. Onyemata is going to come in here, and I think he's going to be a really good player that I think could take the next step this year. Pro Football Focus definitely thinks so, but I also think he can do this just because he is a freak of nature, and he only learned football a few years ago before he was drafted. So now he's getting to his own and he's doing some really good work that I really like what he's doing. He rookie year wasn't really good. He had um, a 57.2 grade and that jumped up to 71.6 in 2017 and then 81.2 in 2018. They think that pro football focus thinks he's going to hit an 89 grade if he seeks on this track which I think, I mean, look, that's starter level, that's star level. So he's a player to watch out for. They said that he was stuffing many attempts against the Ravens. He said he was really good against the run and had some late impact sacks late in the season. So that's obviously really good. The only player that had a higher pro football focus rating from week 13 on was Aaron Donald. So that's obviously really good. Look, it's only a week one suspension. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but he'll be back. Week two when the Saints really need him. So I think it's just really big for the Saints to have him and get him for these important games after the first game where we go on the road uh, out west and then we go and play the Cowboys. A lot of tough games early in the season and I'll be happy that he only misses one game. So I think that's just really good stuff there. 
Also, I just wanted to say, it's kind of quick, but there was a video that surfaced that Drew Brees was throwing to Darren Sproles in their workout videos. I thought that was pretty interesting. And maybe Darren Sproles is a possible candidate. We talked about it on another podcast, so you guys could go check that out. But I, I feel like Darren Sproles could be an option for the Saints. I told you guys having Sproles, Kamara, and then also Murray is an amazing, amazing three running back tandem there and I think it could be really good big he's a big depth piece and I think he's gonna be a really good player there and I just want to put that out quickly not to spend a lot of time on it but I think it'd be interesting if he comes back and plays for the Saints with Breeze and just kind of bring maybe it's like his last season try to get him a ring I think that would be really good stuff so before we get into some camp battles we are gonna take a quick break you are listening to the Who Dat Discussion podcast Welcome back into the Who Dat discussion. Now we're going to talk about some camp battles going into 2019's training camp for the Saints. I think it's going to be a really interesting one. And I think if this goes into, we're going to talk about the defense first and then get into the offense. But the defense takes a really long time. We'll kind of split it up, do the defense this episode. And next week we'll, we'll do the offense. But the defense has a lot of battles here. Really, the D-line is not fully locked in there are a lot of moving parts there because of injuries and stuff like that and then also you got to look at the back end which there's some camp battles as well the really only place where there's going to be no training camp battles is going to be the linebackers because you have davis anzalone and klein they're your three starting linebackers and that's going to be really big but we're going to start off with the trenches in the defense here and D-line. Start it right off, and we're going to start off at the ends as the second D end position. This is going to be a really interesting battle. Obviously, leading the way is going to be second-year player now, Marcus Davenport. Davenport posted a pretty interesting rookie year before he got hurt. Then he got hurt, came back, wasn't as good. But he did come in there, and he had four and a half sacks, which was really good in his first season. He missed, off, I think, four games. Uh, So it is what it is here. He had an amazing nine-game stretch, ten-game stretch. I think it was nine games where he had four and a half sacks. That would, uh, you know, if you project it, if he did that same thing for another eight games, he would have around ten sacks, eight sacks, whatever it is. That would be really good for Davenport. And then he came back from the injury. It wasn't as good. So what I'm looking at from Davenport, and it's going to be integral to start a training camp. If if we see that splash that energy that he brings always or it will be a little lethargic and that injury kind of made him a little lethargic but without the injury he was making huge plays athletic plays I want to see that again from him and he's going to be the leader and he probably is going to take this role and run with it but there are a lot of other players that can step in and make a splash here Trey Hendrickson he's going to have to make a big jump here that third year jump let's see what he's gonna be he's a player that can come up in here help Davenport maybe he overtakes Davenport but he's a player the Saints drafted him in the third round of 2017 of that amazing draft class and he was kind of the not the mishit there because he was the 103rd pick in the third round but he was the player that the first player the Saints really didn't hit on in that draft and you're not gonna say that you didn't hit on him yet but his first two years were really underwhelming and it, you know he had no sacks last year, two sacks in 2017. When looking at it, not really much. He only played five games in 2018. He didn't have a good season, let's put it that way. Now, he's 24, very young, obviously. But this is where he's got to make his jump. He's got to make his third-year jump. Usually, obviously, you guys all probably know this, but that third year is big. It's probably what you're going to be as a pro. And we're going to see what he can do here. Maybe he comes in, has a good year, and could do stuff special. The Saints did sign Wes Horton. Horton played on the Panthers last year, and he was a pretty good player. He was kind of a part-time player that got things done. He was, I mean, look, he was no star, but he did a lot of good stuff. He's 29 years old. He kind of reminds me of the Alex Okafor type player, but maybe he's not as good as Okafor. Maybe he is, though. He's had some good seasons. 2018, he was not that good. He did play 16 games, but only had one and a half sacks. Then you see in 2017 where he started a few games and played really good. He had five and a half sacks. He played really good and he was had a good season. Also with the Panthers in 2016, he had two and a half sacks. So you kind of average that all together and feel like you're going to get 10 sacks in three years. So you're thinking he's going to get around four sacks, three sacks, three to four sacks. And that's probably what he's going to be. 
But also, Okafor was at that way. He only had one good season before he came to the Saints, and he had some really solid seasons. So could he be like uh, Alex Okafor, play with Marcus Davenport, and kind of have a platoon going on there? That's a possibility, but I just don't see that as much. I think he's kind of a downgrade to Alex Okafor, as probably many people do. Alex o- Okafor got paid. Horton obviously didn't. So, I mean, like last year, he didn't really have a good pro football focus grade. It was below average. 2017, it was better. He did have a higher, uh, more to average, above average rating, but this year, not so good. 2017, he was a good player. He was a very solid player. He was a productive player. He did some really good stuff. But in 2018, it just wasn't that for him. I mean, yeah, he had a 72 grade, which is above average. So that's really good for him. 2018 wasn't that. He basically cut his um, score in half, which is not very good for him. But I do think that he could come up and be a possible player that the Saints come up in and use to help supplement Davenport or be that full edge, second edge player. I hope he's not because that would, I think that's kind of worst case scenario if he comes up and does that. But I think he is definitely a possibility there just because he definitely has some experience and he's a veteran, 29 years old. He definitely reminds me of Alex Okafor in many ways. He's that situational pass rusher. He's very good at technique and he's not as good as that athletic player, but he's really good technique. So he kind of helps Davenport in that respect. He can be his mentor kind of. I think he also reminds me of George Johnson. Maybe a, he's probably a mix between the two. It's a little George Johnson in him, a little Alex Okafor in him. You put them together instead of like a six, seven sack season that Okafor has or a two sack season that Johnson has. You put them together, maybe he has a four sack season, something like that, four and a half, five sacks. He probably could put that up and it could be reasonable. But I just don't see the Saints coming in here and having Wes Horton as their number two. It's, you're probably going to have to go out and trade for someone. That's what I think the Saints will end up doing Anyway, just like they did cornerback last year, I think this is their hole this year is going to be that second defensive end for the Saints. Also, another route you can go is obviously the undrafted free agents could be a players that come up, play really good in training camp, and maybe take this role. I really like Carl Granderson. He would have been a probably a fifth, fourth round draft pick if it wasn't for his legal issues, and Sean Payton has raved about him in minicamp, so that's really good. I like that. When looking at him, I think he could be a player that comes up, does some really good stuff. And I think, you know, when you look at his overall scouting report from NFL.com and stuff, he does a lot of good stuff. He has a lot of speed and power, long strider. He has good burst, good lateral movement, and he has good pivot. And he also has a lot of interceptions in college, but he is and plays lighter than his listed weight, which could be a problem in the NFL. And he's going to obviously have legal issues, which is big. And he also has tr- trouble maintaining his ground against, like, power offensive linemen, which comes to be and happen here. And I just think Granderson, I think he has more upside than downside. And I think he could be a really good player. I've kind of been his advocate when many people haven't been. I think he could play that comes up in here and does some really good stuff. Will he probably start right away? No. But he's an option the Saints can go. Obviously, there are other guys as well. But I just think Granderson is that number one option. He's, I think he's the most talented out of any of the undrafted free agents that the Saints have, especially on the defense or the defensive line. So that, that's just what I feel there. And I, I think that's really what this battle is going to look at. It's going to be a deep one. There's going to be many different parts of it. But there is no one player that I say he's going to be the number two defensive end. Obviously, Davenport leads the way, but he's not surefire, for sure. I think everybody thinks that. Then, we're looking at, we're going to go interior, too, because there are questions. When looking at it, you got Malcolm Brown in that um, one-tech. He's going to be a one-tech. He's a good one-tech, Malcolm Brown. He could also push the pocket back, get some sacks. He's a good player. He's good at stopping the run. He's one of the best defensive tackles at stopping the run in the whole NFL. He's a, a, better than Dav, uh, Davidson. Tyler Davidson, he's going to be an upgrade over Davidson. I think we're going to see that in games, and I think that's going to help the Saints kind of mask the loss of Alex Okafor in that way. I know they play different positions, but you know, a downgrade with an upgrade, you're good, and I think they'll be fine there. But then you get to the three-tech position, and that's where Sheldon Rankins, he's going to be coming back from the injury here, and that's going to be tough. He's probably going to miss the start of the season. I think we all kind of know that at this point. But the injury problem last year, Rankins did have the torn Achilles. That's not a good look for him, but he did have a career season last year with eight sacks. He played um, all the games, so 
eight sacks in 16 games, obviously really good for a three tech. He was one of the best three techs in the game, and that was his third year jump. He made that jump to be a big overall good starter, solid starter in the NFL. Then he gets hurt. So obviously, no question number one for this camp battle is he won't be playing in camp. So that means that's going to give other guys those reps. Obviously, David Onyemata, he's your three-tech. He's your backup three-tech. He played really good at the end of the season. He played really good in the playoffs. He's going to probably come in there. But he does have that suspension for a game. What is that going to do? Now you have other guys. How about Taylor Stallworth? Not a three-tech. He's more of a one-tech. But he's a defensive tackle. Maybe he can move over, do some good things. Mario Edwards Jr., he's the three-tech that could also swing out to defensive end if need be. Maybe he's a player that also is defensive end. That's possible as well. But he is kind of that three-tech that can come in there. He's probably going to be the, the game one three-tech. It's probably going to be Edwards and Malcolm Brown. That's probably what we're looking at right now. Not that that's a bad thing, but I think that's probably what's going to happen with the Saints. I think he is going to be your main guy. Him and Onyamata are kind of going to battle it out at training camp, which is going to be really interesting. Edwards was kind of that part-time player for the Giants last year, and it is what it is. You know, I think that's for him. He's not a bad player. He's going to be a steady player. Uh, last year, he had two sacks. Year before, he had three and a half. So that's why kind of what he's looking at, which is not bad. But he's going to be more of that three-tech that comes in there and makes some plays. He didn't play all the games in these seasons. He played around 14, 15 games. But I think he come in here. He's really athletic, and also he could be a really good three-tech at times. And I think he could be average for that first game and hold the fourth down until Onyamata comes back, who I think is above average. And then also you have Rankins coming back hopefully in four games or something like that. It's a shame that he misses the early part of the season where the Saints have a really hard schedule. But that kind of is going to happen here. I think that's that's kind of the case. Maybe he comes back. Maybe he's on really good progress. But they haven't even talked about his progress yet. So that's why I'm kind of fearing that it could be longer than four games, maybe six games, maybe even longer than that. Maybe it's half the season. And the Saints do have a lot of depth there, which is interesting, but you're missing your maybe your third best defensive player here, especially last year. So that's kind of a blow for the Saints. But when you're looking at battles, that's kind of what it is there. When you're looking at undrafted free agents, none really come to mind here when talking about tackles, uh, defensive tackles and stuff. They don't really they didn't really draft any ones that really came out to me, especially the three tech so i just i don't really see it but the scene's coming up and getting a really good three tech in the udfa maybe but it's really usually more one techs come from that either sixth seventh round or udfa like taylor stallworth who i think could be a really good player but look i think the saints are good one tech at three tech once onyamata comes back they'll be fine like you don't have a star there in rankings but you have a good overall good starter that could be a rising star as we talked about earlier so i think that could be interesting stuff there so before we move over to the secondary we're going to take another break you are listening to the who that's discussion podcast welcome back into the who that discussion we are discussing the 2019 saints camp battles and we already talked about the end and defensive end and defensive tackle positions now we're going to move over to the secondary, which the Saints have such a deep secondary that training camp battles are bound to happen. And there are just, to me, there's kind of two, maybe one, but I think I'm going to go with two here. First, and the main one here, is that slot corner. You have, obviously, PJ Williams, who did a really good job last year. Still, his suspension hasn't came out yet, and now you're starting to think, is he going to get suspended for the DUI? Nothing has been said about it. He hasn't been suspended yet, which is kind of weird, because I would think he gets a DUI, you would think, is going to get a suspension. He doesn't get the suspension, which is extremely interesting, and now he may be coming in as the starter for the Saints. Patrick Robinson, P-Rob was the Saints' best cornerback last year before he got hurt. He Now he's coming back, and he may not even have a starting job. Really interesting stuff. Who wins this? And then you have Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who plays every position, including slot corner, and he's extremely talented, a good playmaker, and he could be an option here. So this slot corner can go so many different ways. I don't know what you guys think. I think Patrick Robinson should start, He especially if he's coming good off his injury, which I'm hoping he is. He was off out all of last year. I, I feel like besides the first three games he played and then he got hurt. So he comes out. I think he can 
And he played really good in minicamp. Looked explosive. Looked just as good as he always is. He always has a lot of picks, and he's pretty athletic, so he can run them back. So I think he, he did a really good job in minicamp. I think he should be the starting slot corner. P.J. Williams proved a lot, and he's a great player. And I don't want to put him down in any way because he did so much, and he's been really resilient his whole career. But I do think Patrick Robinson is better. Gardner Johnson's kind of your wild card. I think he'll just get moved from the slot this year and just not play there because there's so many good other players. You have Williams and Robinson. I think those are the main two. Williams had an amazing season. I don't want to put him down, but I just think he's good depth. Because most likely, one of these corners or one of these guys in the secondary isn't going to be who we thought they were. It happens last year with Ken Crawley. It happens a lot in the NFL. It's very hard for cornerbacks to have multiple years of sustained success. Maybe it's Eli Apple. It's going to be interesting. Maybe the Saints are fine there, but it's good to have that depth. Never have enough depth. Injuries, people are regressing, and I think P.J. Williams is a good depth player for the Saints that could start, be a productive Good starting NFL, above average starter in the NFL, and the Saints have him as a backup. That's really good. And you really can't say anything bad about P.J. Williams. He came up, stepped up for the Saints after getting burned early in the season, watched the tape, got better. He was a fan favorite of mine, and a fan favorite because he's very resilient. People were calling for his head, and by the end of the season, they were saying how good he was. That's what you want to see. That's I love seeing those types of stories, and P.J. Williams did that. Gardner Johnson's, he's so good. I don't know why he fell so much. He was a second-round talent, gets picked in the fourth round, top 70 player on the Saints board. He's so athletic. He's a great player, great player in space. I think he's an overall stud, and I think he's going to be a stud. First year, I don't know. I think he's going to be more of that dime player, that probably a safety that you move up into the box. But it's going to make the Saints put exotic looks out there and do some really good stuff. That, I think, is big as well. Well, I think when you're looking at the slot, I hope Patrick Robinson comes back from the injury because I think before the injury, he was the most talented out of any of the slot guys. He's probably one of the best slot corners in the league. 2017, he was rated the best slot corner in the league when he played for the Eagles. Earlier in the season, he was doing the same thing. So hopefully, when he comes back from the injury, he's just as good. And you have kind of P.J. Williams as the backup. I think overall, that is good stuff there. And then also, you get these safeties... I think Marcus Williams had a lackluster season. You're going to want to see something better. It's not so much of a camp battle with Gardner Johnson because he's also plays free safety. So he probably will start at free safety with Williams. I don't think it's a camp battle, but I want to see more out of Marcus Williams. Last year, he was supposed to come up, have a Pro Bowl season, all pro season, and he fell flat. I mean, that's what we have to say. He was an average to below average at times, but basically he was also above average at times. I'd say he's an average. He was a wash last year. It wasn't that good. Von Bell had a great season from the song safety spot, but Williams did take that step back. Now it's coming into his third year jump. I think he's got to be good. He's got to come up and make some plays and be a good player, or the Saints may have to move on from him. They already have Johnson in the building. They have young safeties and secondary, secondary players with Saquon Hampton as well, who the Saints thought was a top 70 player, which I thought was kind of interesting. Overall, I do think that it's going to be Williams starting at the free safety position. Johnson will back him up just in case of injury, but that's he's going to give him a run for his money. Johnson's ready to play. I think he has that, that Saints boot gang mentality, and I think he's going to be a really good player for the Saints. The strong safety, I think Von Bell all the way, but I think the Saints will be able to play that three safety set at times, and I think that's going to be really good for them, and I think they like playing that three safety set, so overall, that's really good stuff as well, and you're going to be able to play Johnson, Williams, and Bell, have Lattimore and Eli Apple, and then, you know, if you're playing that dime package, you're going to have Patrick Robinson out there, and you have P.J. Williams on the bench there, you also have Ken Crawley and Justin Hardy, which is interesting there, they're going to probably be more special teams guys, I love Justin Hardy, he's the best, one of the best special teams players in the league, so he should be right up there and keep on doing good work. I think Saquon Hampton's going to be a special teams player. But that's just what I think there. There are some battles, and, you know, I, I think that's kind of what every team is. I think there are two battles, main battles this year, and some obviously smaller battles that we talked about. you got to look at the end, defensive end position, the second one, and then also the slot corner, which are kind of smaller positions anyways that don't have as much impact as others. But I haven't seen the Saints get burned on the slot too many times, so they gotta stabilize that like they did last year, and then you gotta have a a defensive end opposite Cam Jordan, so they gotta do that as 
well. So with all that said, I think it's time to wrap up this podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast and all of our Saints content, you can follow us on Twitter at the Who Dat Dis, on Instagram at Who Dat Discussion, and then also you could subscribe to our iTunes channel, YouTube channel, Spotify channel, and our Google Play channel at the Who Dat Discussion. We're also on TuneIn and um, the Castbox. We're also trying to get on the Himalaya app and all that fun stuff there. So. I think our next episode will probably be a joint episode with the All Saints Considered podcast. I can't wait to do that. And I think just, I really want training camp to start. I just can't wait. I'm really excited for that. So with all that said, I want to say thank you, finish the deal, and who dat?